Hello, welcome back. DJ Vic Vapor with you. So we've been continuing on in our uh, drum machine, Bitwig Studio 2 drum machine course. And in this tutorial, and maybe the next couple of tutorials, I'm not sure how much we'll need to cover, but I wanted to take time uh, to look at the sampler. It's an important feature of what you're going to be working with and the primary um, go-to instrument or tool within the drum machine itself that's going to be allowing you to bring in and drop samples within your different areas and cells within the drum machine. So we probably should take a little time to better understand it. Now I'm not going to dedicate a full course to it, but we're going to get enough information to wrap our heads around some of the unique features that it has and some of the things that we're able to do to help shape our sounds. So I've got a drum loop loaded in here and I'll hit the play button. Pretty simple. First thing you can notice or first thing we want to take a look at is our start and end points. These yellow flags we've got listed here for us. Those are obviously something we can move to isolate individual percussive hits within this loop or individual sounds within any loop that we're working with. So let's take it over here and isolate this first one which is our kick. Now I want to zoom in. I want to see that closer. So what I can do is if I hover my mouse down here, you'll see this kind of little bar gray thing up here and it gives me a magnifying glass. Now I just simply click hold it down and I'm going up with my mouse. And then I'm going to up and to the left a little bit to kind of stay isolated on that area. So there's our kick drum. A little bit closer. Easier to see. Alright, so Let's say I just want to have that sound captured from this loop. So if you right click in the open area here, and I'm right clicking near the end of our marker for a reason, but if you right click, you've got set sample start here, set sample end here, set loop start here, and set loop end here. I'm going to check, I'm going to select and check set loop end here. So that put in place a loop end for us. Now if I hit the loop button you'll see that marker that it just added. When the loop button's off you don't see it but when you hit the loop button now you'll see this is the end loop marker. And one of the cool things that you can do with this guy is I'll hit, I've got a little MIDI kick pattern up here. I'll hit play with it. And if you, with it looped and, and manipulating this marker, well now we can start to change our sound. And of course, with all the various uh, modulators that we have these days in Bitwig Studio 2, you can imagine there can be a lot of fun to be had with a simple little technique like that. All right, so I'll stop this guy. So that's kind of how you can isolate sounds very easily and very quickly within the uh, loops that you drag in. So let's take a look at a few other features here on the uh, sampler. This little guy up here on the left is if you want the sound that you're playing to key track. In other words, let me go to my MIDI and let's go back to our different view here and let's put this um, second kick note up here and let's put this fourth one down here. So now they're on different notes. The kicks are in the same pattern, essentially one, two, three, four, but different notes. So what we should hear, if it's key track selected, is the sound or the pitch of the in individual hit kind of going up and down.
So hopefully that makes sense to you. You can hear the difference there. Um, typically on percussive sounds, you probably don't want that selected, that key track feature. I would think maybe more towards a synthetic or synth sample or another sample that, you know, has some uh, advantages to being pitched up or down in a variety of ways. So that is key tracking. And you'll notice when a key track is on, you also get a fine tune area where by sense that you can fine tune how that sounds. So if you don't like the overall sound of it, you can fine tune it. The C3 indicates that that is going to be where this particular sound is going to be triggered. You know, it tells you right there that key at which the sample will be played back at its original pitch is C3. So if you, you know, if you want to drag it over to C3 and it within your, um, There we go. So if I want to drag it to C3, that'll be its original pitch. And then I just have to make sure that I've done the same with whatever MIDI notes I'm working on. That They're all on the C3. So So there, now that sample will be played back at its original pitch. Well, let's see. This is always good in tutorials to figure out what we've done wrong here. So I put it on C3. Which one is being activated? It looks like F1 is being activated. No. So let's take it back to our F1. And there's our sound. So that's a kind of good example within the tutorial to see how easy it is to kind of get lost a little bit within activating your sounds in the MIDI clips. So C3 is the note that it plays back at its original pitch. So if the key track is activated, it's not gonna be at its original pitch. That's kind of where I got lost there. So sorry about that, but glad you got to kind of experience it with me because it probably could happen to you guys as well. So we're back on a uh, correct area here. So we've looked at those guys, the fine tune, and then you've got your, for whatever sample you're working with, loop or isolated sample, you've got your, if you want to bring that sample up and down in volume, your dB level is right there. And let's get her back to zero, or as close as we can. And then our loop feature we've already looked at, and then you've got milliseconds if you want to dial that loop you know, a little bit further, a little bit more detail. You've got your fine-tuned milliseconds there. This guy is for just a, a menu to go load more samples if you want. You can find it from right there. It's just another quiz, quick, easy way to access things. Let's see here. I will do... Let's get rid of this guy. And let's add another one back. All right, so now we've got some things down here. The pitch, if I move that guy up, it's gonna change the, 
pitch, of course, up. And the pitch down. Pretty simple stuff here. Double click, puts it back to the center. The glide is something that I'm going to actually look at in the different channel. I've got it set up. I've got a sound right here because glide, again, is primarily going to be something you're going to use maybe with a synth or some longer sound other than a one-shot percussion. So we've got this little MIDI pattern here. But what I've done is to allow you to hear the glide in effect, Glide is going to be noticeable when MIDI notes are overlapping, similar to this right here. So I put a real basic little overlapping MIDI note pattern down. So let's go back to our glide, or to our sampler. And I've got this sound right here. Um, playing. It's just kind of a wave bassy sound. But... Right now, we'll play it through, and the glide is actually turned down, turned to zero. So it's just going to be the sound itself kind of going back and forth on the different notes. But notice what we're able to do with the glide, how it smooths out the transition from note to note, especially where they overlap. So it's real choppy and abrupt with the glide off, especially when the notes are overlapping. But as I dial up the glide, it smooths out a little bit. Another way to attack and smooth that sound out is by using the attack feature, which we're getting ready to go ahead and go over the H, AH uh, DSR here uh, next, but let me show you another way to smooth out that sound between those notes. You start to get that nice pulsating sound to it, as opposed to a real choppy, abrupt, and upfront kind of, you know, noticeable transition. So that is glide so let's go back to our drum machine and our sampler we have over here with our drums let me mute this guy so it doesn't well actually you know what i don't even think we need it anymore so we'll just get rid of it so it doesn't cause any problems so we've got pitch glide and then you've got the attack which is a basically it's like a fade in to whatever sound you're using so if you want the the sound to fade into and i'll pull this up here So we've got a kick and a snare happening there, but if we use the attack, I can actually almost bypass the kick and fade right into the snare from that point. So let's listen to how that works. Hear how they're both happening? Now it's pretty much just the snare. Because I've... Essentially what you've got to do is be able to visualize... Let me so scroll in here. Visualize like a, a faded volume when you're moving the attack. It's going to fade. It's almost going to cross over and fade this out. And, and it's only allowing us to hear that second portion. And then we've got a little shaper right here. So that's the attack. Hold, of course, is just going to hold hold the sound. And then you've got how fast the sound is going to decay, if you want it to sustain, how quick it's going to release. And then you've got the steel release time right here. And these are all modulatable, of course, from either our modulators here or within here. So you can get pretty creative there. So now we've got a uh, sample start time if we want to adjust the sample start time it's sort of like the attack but not quite the same now you can see we're almost all the way over here on this kick even though our start point is here 
So it's sort of, if you think of it, it sort of acts like the attack, just in a, a different, slightly different way. The attack is going to be a little bit more closer to the actual start point. And this sample start will allow us to move much further down in the sample. Then you've got the loop start and the, the loop length right here. So adjustable. And this little area here, it doesn't look like anything's happening. It's kind of grayed out for us. But if you hit the arrow down, you're going to get all the different filters. And this is our filter frequency filter area. So we've got our band pass. And once you select one, then it becomes active. And then you've got your frequency. And you've got your resonance. I'll go ahead and bypass it. So what do we got left? We've got our velocity, our gain, and our pan. So let's take a listen to how these guys affect the sound. Turning that velocity to the left, it makes it a little bit louder. Turning it to the right will soften it a little bit and, and add some sensitivity. It's, imp it's an important thing to think of when you're doing things like when we're just dealing with the hi-hat kind of sounds. If I've got that isolated and maybe I want to add some humanistic feel to it, I might want to bring the volume over here a little bit and then maybe modulate it with an LFO. And we'll take, we'll take a look at some modulation stuff here in the next tutorial or so. But we can modulate this with an LFO to give it some nice little humanistic kind of flavor instead of that robotic sound, you know, that same velocity uh, sound. And over here we've got the gain of that particular sample. And then we can pan left or right. So, and then our overall output is set right here for us. So that's a good basic look at the sampler and some of the features and some of the ways to manipulate your audio and sounds that you can put in there. And let's move on to the next tutorial and we'll look at some different modulation techniques using an LFO. And then um, I think we're going to wrap up the sampler maybe by looking at ways to add multiple samples into the sampler because it's kind of unique that Bitwig has a sampler that allows you to put more than just a loop or a one shot. You can actually put multiple samples into the sampler and it's very, very powerful. And it's one of my favorite ways to actually use this device. So let's move on to the next tutorial and look at some LFO modulation that we can set up.